Hello, hello everyone. This is Adam with PsychedelicInvest.com and I hope you guys are all having a wonderful start to your week. Um, in today's episode of Weekly Extractions, I'm going to be digging into some of the events that have been making waves in the market the last week or so. Um, there's been some interesting stuff to cover, interesting things to talk about. So let's just get right into things. Okay, so leading off here, we're going to continue just talking about the whole Midasin saga going on right now. So what's going on with Midasin? So essentially Midasin only had about 300k left. Uh, they had stopped even they had they had shut down part parts of the research they were doing as a company in order to save money and be more efficient with it. Um, essentially Midasin looks like a mess right now. Ever since the reverse split that they did, uh, things just haven't looked great for the company and for the investors specifically. Um, so right now we have another, like this was breaking when it happened. It's, this is a little data. I think it was from last week, but Midasin raises 240K and the CFO resigns. So what does this mean for Midasin investors? It means that they're not shutting the doors down just yet. Uh, it looks like there's some, something's going on behind the scenes here. Uh, that will remain to be seen what exactly what that is. Um, I, I'm not sure in terms of what it could be. Um, maybe it could be a, a merger and, or acquisition, who knows. But if I was a Midasin investor, I, the, things just don't look, things just aren't ideal right now. And I know most of Midasin investors are down significantly at the moment. Um, so yeah, it just, it, things going on with Midasin aren't great. Um, it's, they've had a lot of people resign lately. Hopefully they can come out of this. Okay. And hopefully the investors can come out of this. Okay. But definitely something to keep, to keep an eye on in the psychedelic sector. Um, I mentioned this when, when early on, when uh, I forgot which company was, uh, it was, they went essentially went bankrupt, uh, shut everything down. Um, Please remind me of that company in the comments if you guys remember. I, I don't know why the name is slipping me right now. Slipping, slipping me right now. Uh, I have a way with words, guys, and it's not efficient. But I, I hope I get my point across when I talk to you. Um, but essentially, yeah. So this was bound to happen within the psychedelic sector and all these biotech companies. It costs a tremendous amount of money to run a biotech company, to push drugs through the pipeline and whatnot. So I understand what's happening in terms of the consolidations and bankruptcies within the psychedelic sector. I really hope that Midasin can figure something out in order to save their investors and also save the company, essentially. Uh, we'll see how things go. Um, but I guess what I'll say is the, the fact that they raised 240 K that can be looked at as slightly optimistic. So there could be some silver lining here, uh, that remains to be seen once again, but we'll see how things go. Uh, I would definitely be treading carefully as a Midasin investor right now. Okay. And next we have bright minds, biosciences. So bright minds, biosciences is a tongue twister. It's just a mouthful for me to say. So I'm just going to be calling them bright minds. So essentially, uh, bright minds, uh, the stock price went from about 98 cents to uh, a high of something like the high threes, maybe even $4, uh, in the span of, I want to say like five or six days. So that was a significant, significant jump. Uh, it was over 300%. So when that happened, uh, everyone was trying to speculate what's going on. Is it a merger or acquisition? Or is an institution buying in, or starting a position or creating a larger position in Bright Minds? Bright minds? Um, but that remains to be seen. We can all speculate on this. If I had to take a guess, I would think it's an institution possibly uh, taking a position in the company, like a significant position. Or it could also be that they create they 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 landed a partnership with a company and part of that partnership was that they had to buy x amount of stock i'm not sure who knows bright minds biosciences has said that enough this is exactly what they said the company is not aware of any material undisclosed corporate developments and has no material change in its business or affairs that has been publicly disc that has not been publicly disclosed that would account for the recent increase in volume or price in accordance with with applicable disclosure requirements the company will advise the market of material changes if any when they occur so my uh, if i had to speculate here i i think there's something going on uh we'll we'll that remains to be seen i'm going to be using that word a lot today um but we'll see what happens as this unfolds what i will say is that 
appreciation in stock price was very significant in the short amount of time. That type of volume spike will put bright minds on a lot of people's radars just based on that volume spike alone. So it could be we have also more new eyes on bright minds. Um, but my feeling is there's something uh, bigger going on behind the scenes. We might not find about it, find out about it anytime soon. It could be months before we do, maybe even like let's say six to seven months before we even have any clue what happened. Or we might we might never know. We might never know. But the reality is, is if you're speculating on bright minds, this is obviously a good thing. Um, but what I want to add is this: when we see a company appreciate in stock price overnight like this in such a short amount of time with no news being dropped, it's a very good indicator to start taking profits on, uh, if you're up, to take profits on the play. So uh, there's a couple uh, other companies that I can reference that something similar happened to, um, but it's just a good habit as an investor to take profits, watch the stock for a little while, and then buy back in lower if you, if you're, you still have conviction in the play and you still want to be in there. But when you're up, let's say, for example, 300% in the span of... Uh, five days or even 200 percent even 150 percent it's significant it's a healthy exercise to take profits on your investments keep watching the stocks the stock the company and buy back in at a lower price if you can um but yeah lock in some of those profits guys i really really think it's a great habit uh especially with the current market conditions we don't know uh how stable things are we've had so we've had somewhat of a bull run then we're gonna have pullbacks and we might have a whole the sky is falling the economy is dying type of thing at some point in the next couple months so it's just very very healthy to take profits during these times um but it's exciting to follow bright minds and see what is going on uh and so this also came out pretty soon after. So basically, Bright, Mind, Bright Minds announces overnight marketed, marketed offering of units. So essentially, they are raising money. Um, this is a very good thing for Bright Minds, for Bright Minds because it, they're a smaller biotech company. They don't have the cash runway of a company like Compass or a Thai or even MindMed. Um, so for them to be able to take advantage of the appreciation and stock price and to essentially raise money from it, I am totally okay with this. And I'm sure many Bright Minds investors are on board with this as well. This is not a bad thing. Uh, they're going to need funding to keep the doors open, to keep paying employees, to keep pushing things through that pipeline. So i uh, totally okay with this. And yeah, this is fine. Um, and like I said, what I'm seeing from this is there could be something brewing behind the scenes for Bright Minds, and it's exciting, uh, and we'll have to see what, what's going on. What the hell is going on with Bright Minds, guys? Tell me what you think in the comments. All right, and up next we have, so this invest, so this is the title here. This investor made $110 million from trading Bed Bath & Beyond, and he's a 20-year-old student. So they're talking about Jake Freeman here. So Jake and Scott Freeman. Um, basically I had Scott Freeman on my, uh, on the YouTube channel last week. You guys should totally check out that episode. It's called the Freeman Chronicles. It's two, it's a two parter, uh, where we basically dig into, uh, his perspective on our, around mind med, how he feels things are going there. Uh, it's a very eye opening conversation and I recommend, uh, everyone check it out. It's just an interesting perspective to get from the former CMO of mind med and savant. So to continue here, we have basically Jake Freeman made a, had a ridiculous trade. He made about 110 million. I think he started with 25 million and he made 110 million on Bed Bath and Beyond. That is extremely significant. So now, why am I bringing this up and why does it matter to MindMed? So in regards to MindMed, so the day after this happened, MindMed stock spiked from, I want to say, uh, in the like the 90 cent range all the way up to over a dollar um i'll have to check to make sure exactly what that is give me one second all right so my med went so the next day my one my med went from about 80 70 something 80 cents to a high of about a dollar and 30 please correct me if i'm wrong in the comments so that was a so that was a pretty decent jump for the stock price uh, and especially comforting for my men investors, they want to see it over a dollar, even though it fell back down uh, relatively quickly to under a dollar. But that's neither here nor there for what I'm going to talk about right now. In regards to this, so Scott Freeman or Scott Freeman, Jake Freeman made 110 million on Bed Bath and Beyond, and he's publicly stated on my YouTube on my YouTube show, on the podcast that I do, on uh, 
all over Reddit on his Twitter. He stated that they are getting behind MyMed and that's their next focus. So in terms of the hype and new eyes this can bring to MindMed, it's pretty damn significant. So you got a taste of that um, the, the day after this went live. Um, but what I feel is that this is relatively good for the stock. So in general, MindMed was, is a pre pretty retail-heavy stock, so it's mostly owned by retail investors. So to get more new retail there, um, basically coming off of a crazy trade that – Jake Freeman made um, and also voicing his support for MindMed. People want a piece of that action. They're like, this guy made a lot of money from this. So what is he doing next? They want to see. So he publicly stated MindMed was his MindMed is some is a company that he's getting behind. They're buying MindMed shares and whatnot. So with that said, so this is I so as somebody who is invested in stock, I love it when stuff like this happens because I want I don't care if they call it a meme stock. I don't care what they call it. I want as many eyes on the company that I'm invested in as possible. And this has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job of bringing new eyes to MindMed. So what I'll say this is that when MindMed is getting close to that 70 cent range and whatnot, I think it could be a, a decent a decent trade at the end of the day um, because, like I said, it, right now it doesn't look like it's going to fall too far behind 70 cents, maybe bottom around 50, 54 cents, but I don't foresee that anymore. Uh, it looks like the the new eyes and the hype that have been brought to MindMed could support the stock price for a little while at least. We'll have to see how things evolve from here. But in general, I like this. I know a lot of people are – averse to their stocks being lumped in with meme stocks and whatnot but i honestly think it's great you want the exposure for the company and nothing is better for exposure than hitting front page on reddit front page on yahoo front page on market watch or whatever being featured on market watch and whatnot uh you have all these news these these investing news outlets talking about jake freeman and his bed bath and beyond trend they've also covered that he's spoken about my med and he's and that that's something that they're very very interested in obviously uh, scott freeman has a significant amount of shares in MindMed. So I like the hype and the new eyes that this is bringing to MindMed, and I'm all I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So let's see how things evolve. I know the reverse split is going to be coming at some point, um, and it's just going to be interesting to follow the stock price post-reverse split. Um, I'm leaning towards more optimistic now in terms of assessing uh, how much – how much – the price will fall after that reverse split. So I'm not really sure. At first, I had a much more bearish perspective, but now with the new eyes on MindMed and some of the hype that's being brought with all this Jake Freeman stuff, uh, it it could be that it will that the stock price will actually get supported after the reverse split, and things might look good from there. Th this will remain to be seen because at the end of the day, shorts love to pile in to companies that are reverse splitting, especially biotech companies that don't have a revenue at all. They're just burning cash. So it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds post reverse split. Um, I know that Scott Freeman and Jake Freeman uh, were not for the reverse split and they had sent some, they'd sent, sorry guys, they'd sent a message or something to, to MindMed basically saying, how much they didn't like it or whatever. I don't know exactly what their correspondence has been with MyMed. I know MyMed isn't really uh, engaging them that much, but I know that it's it's known that Jake and Scott Freeman were not were not getting behind the reverse split. And I know a lot of the retail investors who are invested in MyMed aren't thrilled about the reverse split as well. Um, but we'll see how this unfolds. I'm honestly just just interested to see how things evolve from here because MindMed is. Definitely one of the more um, well-known psychedelic plays. And now we have this whole Bed Bath & Beyond, Jake Freeman, Scott Freeman thing attached to MindMed. Uh, it's going to be a wild ride in my opinion. So I'm very excited to see how things unfold. I know I said that at least four times in a row now, but that's how I feel. Um, and yeah, let's get to some of the charts. We'll look at some of the price of these plays, and we are going to call this a video after that. So let's get to the charts. All right, so we still have the volume coming in for both MindMed and Drug. So the ticker symbol for My Bright Minds is Drug, lovely ticker symbol, but we still got heavy volume coming in for both of these plays. 
Um, and it's they seem to have bounced off support levels as well. So things are looking good, actually, for both my, drug and mind meta. We'll have to see how things progress, but... I'm liking what I see with specifically uh, Bright Minds over here. That was a nice bounce it took. And what do we have here? We have uh, here. We have Mind Med also. It, I think it had hit a low today of about 70 something cents, 74 cents, something like that. And it took a nice bounce uh, close to around 90 cents. And now we settled at around 84 cents right now uh, with still plenty of time left to trade. But I'm liking what I see on both these charts, if I say so myself. Um, things are looking good. The volume is definitely there. If my med can keep this volume up, then I would be even less concerned in regards to the reverse split. Um, and in regards to drug, things are just looking really interesting here. Um, and we'll have to see how things unfold. I, I'm, I'll be very curious to see where, uh, the price ends up, I guess, settling. Um, but yeah, that's the episode for today, guys. Uh, I hope you guys appreciate it. I got a bunch of content coming out. Uh, this month, like more content than I, than than I can even keep up with sometimes. But I love doing this. I really, really appreciate everyone in the community, and thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, if you guys want to, please like and subscribe. It it helps a lot in regards to breaking through the algorithms and whatnot, and just getting more eyes on the channel. Um, and also, if you guys ever want to reach out to me, my Instagram is Waxing Eloquence, W-A-X-I-N-G-E-L-O-Q-U-E-N-C-E, -E -E, and that's the same on Reddit. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you ever want to chat about psychedelics, investing, if you want to be on the channel, if there's anyone who... who who thinks they have something to add and wants to be on the channel. I would love to get other perspectives on here and have conversations as well. So, yeah, check out the next episode. This is Adam to Adam Tabero. I always forget to say my last name. This is Adam Tabero signing out. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day.